Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm a machine learning engineer and developer evangelist at Voxel 51. 51 is the leading open source toolkit for curation and visualization of computer vision data. And 51 plugins are an extensible framework that allow you to customize the functionality of 51 for your particular workflows. We're currently in the middle of a 10 weeks of plugin series where each week we're bringing you one or multiple plugins that showcase just some of what is now possible with the plugin ecosystem. And this is week seven right now. And I'm going to be telling you about the active learning plugin. So what is active learning? Well, one of the most time consuming and expensive parts of a lot of machine learning and computer vision workflows is the data labeling, the annotation of your images, videos, or whatever other samples you have uh, to generate ground truth data that you can then train your models on. Uh, this can often be incredibly tedious and incredibly manual and just takes a lot of time. Active learning is an approach to expediting that and to uh, allowing you to label your data faster and more efficiently uh, by being clever about the way that it chooses the samples that you should be annotating next. So uh, active learning is an approach that uh, is currently under a lot of active development, uh, but there are some tried and true methods that work pretty well for uh, various situations. Today, we're going to be working with the active learning plugin in 51. So this is the week seven plugin. Um, and this plugin, which is located at uh, this GitHub repo right here. So it's github.com slash Jacob Marks slash active learning plugin. And you can install it by using the 51 plugins uh, command line interface syntax, plug it 51 plugins download, and then passing the name of this GitHub repo. Um, this repo uses the modal framework. So uh, modal is a modular active learning framework in Python. Uh, and this is a, a library that is built and designed to handle a lot of the active learning uh, functionality for, for general data sets. So uh, effectively what it does is it can take uh, these learners, um, basically uh, whatever your estimators are, so those are the things that are taking in the input data and generating predictions for the outputs. And it can use those, uh, make ensembles of those, even committees out of those ensembles and estimate the uncertainty in all of their predictions and all their estimations. Um, and from that uncertainty, it can give you a sense for what you should label next. So the general way that it works is uh, you have this set of predictions uh, and you have a set of priors or basically the hypotheses that the active learner has. Uh, you can query the active learner uh, so you can find the most uncertain samples and then you can teach it. So you can give it a, a bunch of input and output examples. And then from those examples, it can then update its predictions uh, for the entire data set or for some sample of the data set. So this active learning plugin is going to have three operators. It's going to have the create active learner. So this is going to be the initialization of this active learning environment uh, and the, the learner itself. So this is the, the model that we're going to be using to label our data. And one important point of clarification here is we are using a model to label our data, but this is not the model that we are training uh, long term. So this is not our general, probably deep learning model that we are going to be uh, doing a lot of computation on to actually train. Uh, we're not going to be doing any um, you know, full training with GPUs or anything like that. Uh, we are doing a very light procedure right here uh, that is just going to help us to label our data faster. So this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to accelerate the process of getting the ground truth data so that we can then train our final model that we are actually going to be using in practice. Uh, so the first operator is this create active learner. Then we have a query learner. So this is uh, basically you can ask it, hey, give me the next K samples that are you're uncertain about, and I can teach you what to do with those. And then uh, this update learner predictions is the third operator, and that takes whatever the teachings that you have are uh, and teaches the learner, and then it updates its predictions across the data set based on that. So the data set that we're going to be using is the Stanford dogs data set. So um, this is just an example and you know you could choose whatever data set you'd like. You can use this for um, any type of image related data set and there are extensions of this for videos and lots of other types of data. Um, this plugin only works right now for classification uh, tasks. So when you're classifying the image as one thing or another. And we're going to be using the subset of a Stanford dogs data set. So 
the Stanford Dogs dataset uh, generated by uh, Fei Fei Lee's group and uh, some others at Stanford University uh, is a subset of ImageNet that was annotated for the task of fine-grained image categorization. And it has 120 dog breeds in here. For this task, for, for this demonstration, I have just taken a subset of that. So um, this is the subset. I've taken four of the breeds from that Stanford Dogs data set. In particular, I've taken the Afghan Dog, the Irish Wolfhound, the Maltese, and the Samoyed. And these are the images that are uh, given by Wikipedia. And I have extracted those and I've taken the patches, so the detection patches of those dogs uh, from all of the images containing them, um, gotten rid of the labels so that we can actually do some active learning here. We can stimulate the, uh, the process of labeling our data from scratch. Uh, and I've shuffled all of these images just so it's a little bit more random. So this is what the data set that we're going to be working with looks like here. And the reason that I've chosen these particular breeds is we can tell the difference for the most part, but some of these breeds are close enough that they might confuse a basic model. So for instance, a Maltese and a Samoyed are both kind of similar. Uh, so they're similar enough, at least in the, the pixels and patches in the image that maybe a model could get confused. And then the Afghan uh, Hound and the Irish Wolfhound uh, are also relatively similar. So again, they're not exactly similar, we can tell them apart, but they're similar enough that this is a case where maybe an out of the box model, a, a zero shot model would not get everything right. And we need to uh, use a more clever approach in order to uh, generate these active learning, uh, to generate these labels in our data. So, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to hit our backtick or tilde button to pull up our list of operators. And when we do that, we are going to type in active and we will see three operators show up here. These are the three operators that uh, I showed you in the, uh, the GitHub repo for the active learning plugin. We click on the active learning. Uh, so right here, if we click on the create active learner operator, we see a couple of warnings. So the first warning is a documentation warning. So this documentation warning is saying, okay, want details on the plugin? Check the plugin's GitHub repo. So that's not an issue for us. That just is saying, if you want more details, go to the GitHub repo. This second one is something that we actually do care about. So this is, say, is saying that we don't have any classification fields on our data. So the way that this plugin works is you need some initial labels to initialize the learner. Uh, and this is going to give it a starting point from which it can begin to learn. Uh, this plugin currently does not support bootstrapping. You could extend it to support bootstrapping, but at the moment it does not. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate some labels for it to use to start this active learning process. And we're actually going to be using the zero shot prediction plugin, which was our week six plugin or last week's plugin. Uh, we're going to be using the align model from this plugin. So you could use any classification model uh, that is a uh, an open vocabulary or a zero shot model in order to generate these, or you could tag samples by hand. And uh, both of these are supported here. And you know we are, you don't need to label all of the data. Uh, you only need to label a subset. As long as you have at least one example from each of the classes labeled, then you should be uh, okay in terms of the the way that the uh, the mechanics actually work. Uh, but from my experience, and, and I think this is pretty standard, you need a minimum three to five examples from each class that you want to have the learner work with in order for it to at least do a decent job. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our operators list and go to our zero shot classification. And we're going to use the align model. And we're gonna type in our labels. So here I have them right here. We're gonna enter our labels as a comma separated list. And we're going to execute this, but we don't wanna execute this necessarily for all of our images. Let's just do a subset. So we're gonna select by clicking the first one, and then we're going to press the shift key and then select this one down here. So we're just gonna take the first 29 samples and we're gonna go back to our classification and we're gonna label these. So this should be relatively quick. We'll do it here. And 
you know, while this is going, this, this might take a couple of seconds, but it shouldn't take too long. Um, you can really use whatever zero shot model you'd like here, or you can tag things by hand. Obviously you don't want to tag everything that actually would just be, you know, rec recreating the entire labeling process. Um, this plugin at the moment only supports classification, but it could easily be extended to support detection and uh, segmentation and even key points. For those, the, the biggest hurdle right now is that you need to have a custom uh, UI interaction with the individual samples to do that learning, to, to be able to update its predictions. For classification, you don't need to really interact too deeply with the, the pixels and the regions within the image to do that. So this is just as a proof of concept to, to demonstrate the power of active learning. Uh, this is you know, what we're using, but this could be very easily extended. And we see that our predictions have been generated. So now we have some initial labels on these first 29 images and these predictions look pretty good. So for the most part, it looks like it got them right. And of course, you know, we don't expect all of every single prediction that was generated by our zero shot models to be right. If they were, then we wouldn't really have a need to generate ground truth data to train another model, uh, but you know, it does a pretty good job and that's good enough for us for now. So we're going to unselect. So here we're gonna clear all of our selected samples. And now that we have all of these, so we have this initial set of 29 labels and it has at least one for each of the four classes right here. It's actually got a pretty even distribution here. Um, we're going to create our learner. So if we, go down to create learner. And now that we have a label field that we can use, so it has a classification field that can be used. And if you had multiple, then you'd be able to choose between them. Here it's saying field align. That's the field that we put our predictions in uh, is going to be used for the initial labels. We can say, we can specify the name of the field that we want to use uh, to store all of the predictions from our active learner. So we can just call it active we can specify our batch size. So this is the number of um, samples that are returned by each query uh, that we get from the learner. So every time we query it, we get the K uh, least certain samples. And this K is the batch size right here. We can specify what type of learner we want, random forest, gradient boosting, bagging, add a boost. We can specify what these hyperparameters as well. And all of this right here, everything that's going on here is basically a wrapper around the modal library. Now, one additional thing that's worth mentioning is right now, the input features is empty. And that is because we only have one field that can be used uh, at the moment in order to uh, basically be the features, the inputs that the, uh, the active learner is using to predict outputs. So in this case, it is using clip embedding. So I've generated some embeddings using the, the clip uh, or contrastive language, language image pre-training model from OpenAI, uh, generated the embeddings for each image with that model. And that can be found here in the other section. Uh, but the way that this active learning plugin works, it can actually take uh, any arbitrary combination of scalars and vectors. So uh, by vectors, we mean things like the NumPy arrays containing embeddings from a model or multiple models or whatever you'd like. And um, just so you can see how this works, we're actually gonna add a couple of other features. Uh, these are gonna be input features that can be used by the active learner. So uh, as a, a good starting point, we're going to use some of the computations from the common issues plugin. So this is the uh, plugin that we had as a week zero plugin. Uh, and uh, this allows you to compute some common properties across your data set. So things like blurriness or entropy, or saturation. And here we're just gonna do this over all the images. It should be pretty quick because these are all pretty basic properties. So here, let's compute the brightness. And just a few more, we're gonna compute the entropy. So this is the uh, measure or a measure of information content in the images. And we'll do one more, so we'll compute the salt and pepper noise. So now we have all of these properties. We've got this blurriness, brightness, entropy, and salt and pepper, as well as our clip embeddings. So we have a bunch of scalars and a vector. 
And let's go over to our create active learner one more time. And now we have this list of input features that we can use and we can choose any combination of them as long as we choose at least one. So right now we have this warning, there's no input features because we don't have any selected. As soon as we select one, that goes away and we can select any combination of them. So let's just select all of them. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna concatenate all of these features into one vector uh, that will be used as a vector of input features uh, to the active learner, to the, the estimator. We'll do everything else the same as we were doing before. And now we will create. And just like that, we have these initial predictions on all the images of our data set. So uh, we can see these labels. So this is with our active field right here. This is a label field that contains all of these, these active predictions, uh, these hypotheses. And we can even filter by each of these label classes. So let's say we want just the Hypotheses for the Irish Wolfhound, not bad, not bad, considering that it has pretty pretty minimal information to go off of. We can look at the Maltese, again, pretty good. Samoyed, and we can look at the Afghan Hound. So on the whole, this does a pretty good job. Uh, we can see there are a couple of things where it does have issues. So this this is not an Afghan hound. This is a Maltese right here. Uh, but we don't want to go through all these by hand. That's the point of active learning. We're going to be um, using uh, a more clever approach in order to do this. So now that we have all of these initial hypotheses, these initial predictions generated by our active learner, uh, we can query our active learner to get the least certain samples that we can then use in order to update its prediction. So we can teach it based on those queried, you know, uncertain samples, and then we can teach it, uh, you know, what it did right, what it did wrong, and it can learn from that. So we are going to press the back tick or tilde button to pull up our list of operators again, and we're going to type in query to get our query active learner or query learner operator. And we can enter the batch size we'd like. So if we don't enter a specific batch size here, then it will use whatever the default batch size is that we set when we were creating the active learner, uh, but we can override this if we want to. So here we're just going to press enter and we're gonna get a bunch of queries. So we can see all of these right here and you know some of these are wrong and that's totally fine. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to teach it. So we're going to look at all of these and we're going to pick out the ones where the, the predictions are wrong and tag them with the appropriate label class. We look at this one that looks like it is probably an Afghan dog. So let's go over and let's, let's call this an Afghan hound. This one also looks like an Afghan hound. And this one looks like an Afghan hound. So let's tag all three of those as Afghan hound. This one is a Samoyed. And I think everything else is right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to teach so we're going to teach the learner uh, everything that we did not tag will be assumed as correct and everything we did tag will be updated to whatever the tag that we gave it is. And given these, this new information, um, the learner is going to update its hypotheses and it will then generate new predictions across the data set. So if we click out of this, now we are going to again look at our uh, by label and Still not perfect, but getting better. Getting better. And getting better. And let's do this again. So now we're going to query again. And we're going to get a different set of samples now. So now that we've updated our hypotheses, the samples that we are least certain about are going to be different. Uh, they will always be different from the ones that we just had. And we're gonna use the default batch size again, and we get this set of 
our predictions. And here we notice that in some of these, there's a lot more going on than just the dog. Even though we extracted just the bounding box, and a lot of these bounding box was way too large, and uh, that could be messing up the way that the model is predicting uh, based on the embeddings and the other uh, scalar fields that we gave it. So this is going to be a Samoyed, and this is going to be a Samoyed right here. That looks like the only two Samoyeds. So let's tag those as Samoyed dog. This one is right. This one looks like a Maltese. This one is right. This one is a Maltese. So let's tag both, both of those as Maltese dog. This is right. That looks right to me. This one is an Afghan hound. And I think that should be it. So this will be an Afghan hound. And now let's teach. So we're going to teach our learner, update our predictions over the data set once more. And now let's go through again and let's look at our Irish wolfhounds. So still not perfect, but pretty good. Still not perfect, but pretty good. Pretty good and pretty good. And we can go through this process a few more times uh, and our labels should be much better by then. And the point of this is not to uh, get a perfect set of ground truth labels. It is to uh, generate a better set of ground truth labels faster than you would if you were going through and randomly selecting samples to, uh, to annotate or if you were annotating all of your samples all at once. And the beauty of this is that it can be used in concert with the zero shot prediction plugin that we have. Uh, it can also be used in concert with 51's uh, integrations with annotation tools like Labelbox, Label Studio, and see that. Uh, and you can really play around with what features you use as inputs. So uh, it may be that you want a semantic model to be used as the embedding model to generate the uh, the input features. So in this case, we used clip. It might be that you use you want to use something like Dino, which is a, a more general model than that. Perhaps you want to use a more uh, pixels and patches model, like a, a traditional convolutional neural net based model. Um, maybe you want to use a bunch of scalars that are based on um, the saturation and exposure in your images, or maybe something else entirely. You can really play around with them and mix and match. And um, you know, this is just incredibly flexible. And this is just a proof of concept that shows you how powerful uh, active learning can be as a means of accelerating your computer vision workflow. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you liked this, then I, I encourage you to check out our zero shot prediction plugin, as well as our annotation integrations. Um, and stay tuned for lots more plugin related content to come over the next few weeks, as well as a plugins hackathon and a plugins workshop in the coming weeks. So thank you so much. And until next time. Mm -hmm.